Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about resumes, but first, if you could, please subscribe to the channel and get notifications when we do some of these career updates and new information is coming out on the channel. So thank you for that. The first thing that we're gonna do is talk about, like I said, that resume. There are a million ways that you can do a resume. The one thing that I tell everyone that I'm working with is that you wanna have it right really clear. You don't want any confusion on your resume. Doesn't matter what industry, I wanna be able to read the information and know that you can do the job. That resume is going to be your ticket of the door for the interview. So with that said, what you wanna to do to start out is have your name on top. If you don't have your name on top, uh, it's not gonna go very far. The other information that you wanna put on top of that resume is your LinkedIn profile. You want to have your email phone number, and then if you're in the tech field, you want maybe you want to have your GitHub or something that's showing the different languages. Underneath that, you may put a job summary. If you do, do a job summary, you want to have it less than three sentences, three sentences or less. You don't want to have a lot of information up there. If you don't want to do a uh, summary, you can also do a columned bullet point skills list and just put down any skills that you have up top something that you can put out and highlight right away so that they see that you have the skills that they're looking for and asking for. Um, with that, you wanna be very uh, clear. You don't wanna put down great communicator. You don't wanna put down some of the really generic things that people put. They hope that you have those skills and they're gonna see that in the interview. So you wanna just put down skill sets that they're absolutely looking for and asking for. So the next thing that you wanna do is put down your latest job and something that you just did most present. If you're still working, great, put that down. Put down what your job title is. You wanna put down the month and year. Don't try to just put the month, always put down month and year, and then what company you're looking for, what title you're looking for. So what do you put in underneath the skills section of that job? This is where a lot of people lose uh, steam with the hiring manager and the recruiters is you want to put down what the company that you're applying for is asking for. So you want to, that's when we get into that tailored resume. You want to put down that you have about 80% of the skills required within that position for it. Now this is a lot of times with the agency side of recruiting when we're looking for people that they want the job now. Corporate recruiting, you can probably get away with about 60%, 70% sometimes. I always recommend that you want to put down at least 80% of the skill set. So whatever they're asking for within that job description is what you want to put down within your resume. You want to make sure that they can see that you can do the job. Maybe if it's a corporate setting, which is different, it means you're not working with an agency recruiter, they may look at your resume and see that the body of work, they want to bring you in and say, you know what? this person's gonna be great and we want to uh, give them a chance and we're gonna train them. In other situations, when you're working with an agency recruiter, they want you to be able to go in and pretty much do the job tomorrow. They don't have a big ramp up time, they don't wanna train maybe a week just to get acclimated with the systems or the job that you're doing, but they don't want to spend six months training because a lot of times, six months is the contract, one year is the contract. They need you to come in and do the job. So you wanna really take a look at that and understand where it is that you're applying and if you're doing it on your own or are you going through a recruiter. And the recruiter, if you have one, they will tell you what they want to see within that resume. So a few other things. You wanna make sure that the jobs that you have done go up and lead into the job that you're applying for. If you're expecting going at a mid-level or senior level, if you're going at an entry level, junior level uh, within that role, then a lot of times the other things, just make sure that it's really clear. But if you're going in for a mid-level or senior level position or role, you wanna make sure that the jobs go leading up to that, prove that you are a junior or prove that you're a mid-level or senior level person. So really take a look at that. Make sure that the job titles and the things that you have done are leading up to it. Underneath the jobs, you wanna really put down the education. With the education, you wanna put down whether you had a 
uh, anything from associate's degree, bachelor's degree, put down the degree that you got and from the and the school that you got it from. You don't have to put the year, you don't have to put the date, you don't put have to put any things like that down. Uh, typically, uh, newer students will put that down. That is fine if you want to. I don't recommend putting the dates down. Just that you have the degree it usually is sufficient. Also, a lot of people decide that they want to put down their GPA. Uh, that's kind of tricky. You can put it down if it's above, say, 3.75. Anything other than that, eh, I wouldn't recommend it. Even putting in GPA isn't something that I would recommend highly. Now, if you were or part of a large uh, honor society and got honors for that, that might be something to better, better put down than the actual GPA score itself. Um, you're very proud of it. The company might see uh, something a little bit different, but you can put it. I just wouldn't recommend it. I don't teach that. Underneath that, you want to put down any certifications that you have and with the certifications, make sure that they are current, that they are certifications that you can honor right now. If you've had them in the past, you can um, put down that you're knowledgeable about those certifications, but you don't want to put down that you currently have them uh, if you have to recertify with those. The other thing that a lot of people do is put down volunteer experience. If you want to put down volunteer experience, usually it's for a position where you're going to have to be out in the community, where you're going to have to utilize communication skills and skills like that. So a lot of times that volunteer experience, you want to put down the things that matter towards the job. Some companies don't care about volunteer experience because it has nothing to do with the job that they're having. So again, tailored resume. You want to make sure that it's gearing for the job that you're going for and the company that you're going to be working with. The last thing that I want to say with this is you want to avoid putting down uh, your references right on your resume. If you get to the point of the interview, they're going to ask for your references. You don't have to put down available upon request because they will request them if you need them. Um, with that, that's pretty much the best way to do that resume. Do the resume in any format. A lot of times right now, the best way to do it would be chronological. It's the safest way to do it and everybody knows what it is and everyone can read it. Uh, again, please subscribe to the channel and get notified with any of the new content that we're putting out. Thanks.